Can you tell me why you left your country and why you came to Australia? Okay, um, I have a lot of trouble there in my country. Uh, it was, um, there was war and the Americans people, they came in Iraq and they put bomb everywhere and a lot of uh, family members, they die. And especially my home, they put bomb in my home. And I'm very lucky. <coughs> Can't see it. It's hard. <laughs> in my mom house, me and my kids and my husband, when the everything stopped, we went back to see our home is everything is mad. Then my uh, my uncle dad he came back Iraq because he was in overseas and he saw me I get married with a different religion man and then he need to kill me and kill my kids or I need to give my kids for him and my husband he didn't let him to take uh, our kids and then we need to left Iraq I leave my country because uh, war started in Afghanistan and this time I'm not Old, I'm younger, but I'm, I think, 17, 18 years old. I came to Pakistan. I lived for uh, many, not much longer in Pakistan. I think it's 14 or 13 years in Pakistan. After that, in Pakistan, the reason is different because the children, they can't go to school because they don't have in Pakistan a passport or nothing. The refugee condition was very hard. They gave you 12 cups of wheat with two liters of oil, two two cases of soup to live on that for one month. We slept on the ground, you know, and then later on they gave us some, you know, like five others equivalent to Australian others to find your own place, to build your own place to sleep. Well, working as the uh, Department of Obstetric and Gynecology, we were losing up a lot of women, probably about 20 to 25,000 women per year die because of being pregnant. And I thought it was a good time for me to change the system. Being an activist to change up the system, it was very uh, risky taking. So it became apparent that uh, I needed to move out of the country. One of the problems that I had was in my family because one of my uncles were in a team, in a group that they called Mujahideen. He was. Uh, against the government, so he has been executed because of that. And because he lived with us, we had to flee. I'm personally not a, a religious person, but I grew up in a family Baha'i community. So my parents are Baha'i. People that are Baha'i, they, they don't have really a life in Iran. People seek asylum in Australia mainly because it's the closest place that has signed the convention, typically People who come here as boat people have come from that corridor to our northwest, which leads down through Malaysia and Indonesia. Um, people who come from Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq uh, get to Australia without passing through any country that has signed the Refugees Convention. Because India hasn't signed it, um, Malaysia hasn't signed it, Indonesia hasn't signed it. So we are the first place they get to coming down that way which has signed the Refugees Convention. I stayed nine months in Indonesia. After nine months, I, my youngest, she born in Indonesia, two days old. I came to buy boat to Australia. I'm the last person, the boat is get fire. I mean, there's nothing left. My husband say, you jump in the water, but I don't have anything to get to go to the water because in my country, no water, no nothing, you go to swimming. But I go in the water, I go under the water, but the, this time the Australian boat is coming, but the, another guy jumped behind me. She, he took me from the water. But I put, they took me in the Australian boat, but I go there, but my youngest daughter with, my, and my second daughter with my boy is missing for three hours. They keep still looking in the water. They start looking six o'clock until to 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. But after 11 o'clock, they say they, uh, everyone is safe, is two people is die. One is um, old ladies, I think is 60 years old. The another one is a uh, young lady, is 25 years old. She's pregnant by six months. 
this too is gone. My coming was organized by a uh, close friend through uh, foreign affairs, um, Nairobi High, Com Australian High Commission Nairobi, and uh, it was very smooth coming, but it was well calculated. And for me, I needed some time off from what I did and uh, how I can make sure I'm not at risk and uh, I can get up some more experience and then uh, looking other ways to go back. We ran away from Iran to Pakistan, lived there for a couple of months, and then from Indonesia with a boat to Adelaide, to Australia. One of the scary moments that I had was because we were on the edge of the boat, I could easily put my hand in the water, and it was just too many people in a little boat. It could sink any minute. If they can't get a passport from a government that's persecuting them, or if they can't get a visa to come to Australia because we think, well, oh, they might ask for asylum, then what else can they do? All they can do to escape persecution is, you know, use a people smuggler, and that will involve ultimately a boat trip from the last um, place on land, which is uh, Indonesia. No one in their right mind would choose to come that way if they had an alternative, but they don't. I am mother for four kids. I look after them uh, all the time, and I'm studying English as well. And I have time to go to the community to help uh, people with cooking, sewing, exercise, uh, sharing stories. I like to be at the beauty center because this is my future job. I've given almost 30 years of voluntary uh, services to the community in Australia and overseas, a part of the professional work which I do. And uh, all these uh, years are divided in different ways. I sit up on many boards, uh, like the uh, Matikacho Community uh, Services of South Australia. At the camera, we interview people in South African communities. It's one of our projects we're undertaking, where we interview all leaders and other leaders from other communities to hear their views and pass it on. I'm in here with my five children. My two daughters is older, the other three is still younger. But now, finally, I go to the English class. I find some friend in here. I find some family in here, but it's good for me. I'm a chef. And um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm doing it for a couple of years now. I did study different things, but uh, at the moment, I love what I'm doing. So you put an innocent person into prison-like conditions and you can't tell them how long they'll be there. And the, the, the studies show that it takes between 15 and 18 months for people to fall into hopelessness and despair. And then they will start harming themselves, trying to kill themselves and all of the other things. Um, uh, roughly half the people detained by us spend more than that critical 15 months in detention. Many people have just enough. Maybe they, they stay there for two or three years and they get just depressed, they get suicidal, they give the, the children different things to eat or sew the lips or hang themselves or even uh, with razor cut their hands. I'm very, uh, personally I am a depressed person um, there are different things in my life, but one of them was the journey that we came to here. The, when I go to the beach, I go for relaxing, but when I see the waves, everything comes back to me like black and white. And it's about 15 years, but I still get scared of the water. And uh, It's just the feeling that we had at, in the boat for the last night, it was very, very scary because you really don't know if you make it or not. I have a very big depression. Sometimes I'm, I can't breathe. Sometimes I feel not well. Uh, Sometimes I feel my body is shaking, scared for something, but I don't know why. At night when I go to sleep, I see everything happen. I see everything happen when start at Iraq to Australia. They coming like film, it's going quick. And I remember everything. It's my problem, I can't forget. My mom is gone, my brother is lost, my father is gone. Now is my husband is the same. Last year the doctor said to me, maybe after two months he, he's finished. 
he's not live longer, but he's still he, he's alive still, but it's very hard for me. One thing is which is still there, and we have encountered and it's still there, uh, is the racism. That one hasn't gone away. And I wish that uh, if I can be, um, come up a day where everyone around the world will be equal. Some people, they say, why are you here? You should go back in your country. Why are you, uh, you went in scarf? They not respect our, our religion. When I catch the bus, uh, they, uh, sometimes they talk bad for me and I hear, and when I'm looking to them, they say, yes, it's for you. And I don't say anything because I, I don't need to answer them. Because so I'm a very good person. If I answer them, I will be not good. I'm just looking to them and I say, thank you. This is my religion. Personally, for finding job, it's very, very hard. Like, if I change my name on my resume and send it to employer, I get the interview. But if I send it with my own name, I won't get the interview at all. Sometimes they push me in the train, sometimes they push me in the bus, they say, you're a tourist. Why not put your scarf? Why are you wearing a scarf? But I say, that's my religion, that's my choice. In Australia, you can't say to anyone why you do that. It would be a very startling thing these days to hear anyone complain about the fact that that person got an Italian sounding name or a Greek sounding name. It used to happen in the 1950s, that was a no-no. Um, but we kind of got over it. It took a while, but we got over it. And I'm pretty confident we will get over the fact that people who come from the Middle East have different sounding names. I don't have a husband now to look after my kids. I look just after them and I'm very happy to look after them and to make them big and good ed education and to teach them and to respect people and uh, teach them how they will be the personality. It's like this. My children have been named all, the started with the letter P. The first one is Patrick, Peter, and the Prince, and the Pauline. And the reason which we pick up P because I wanted the, the, my mom's letter to come first. I love my family. I love my brothers and sisters. You know, my mom stay in Africa. I'm trying to bring my mom over, but the Australian government said I need to pay 50,000. Deposit 50,000 is not guaranteed. When are it going to happen? I love my children. Yeah, I love my children. Yeah, all of them is the best children, but in, in here it would be different, but sometimes they're very good, sometimes they're a bit naughty, yeah. Is there anything so terribly wrong in sharing our good fortune with other people? We're human beings, are we not? And they're human beings, are they not? And if they are genuinely in danger and distress, we should respond to each of them as human beings, should we not?